This is a podcast that seeks justice. Justice for the lives stolen by those in society that hide amongst us every day. Hidden in our towns, cities and countrysides, the places that we work, and sometimes in our very own homes. This is Hidden Killers. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Tony Bruschi. Be sure to press subscribe wherever you download podcasts. You don't miss any of our updates, episodes, and discussions on the cases that we are following for you. You can even get a commercial-free experience through Apple Podcasts. You've been tried for three days free if you sign up there. We're talking about the Brian Koberger case today with Dr. John Delatore, licensed psychologist. And let's just dive right into this. Uh, John, uh, what I want to start out with is the job termination timeline of Brian Koberger that we've learned about in the last just handful of of days. September 23rd, an altercation with a professor. October 3rd, meeting to discuss professional behavior. October 21st, received email about his failure to meet expectations. November 2nd, meeting to discuss improvement plan. December 7th, meeting to discuss improvement plan progress. December 9th, second altercation with professor. On December 19th, he was officially terminated. It's a a haunting uh, timeline when you really look at the details of it in comparison to when these crimes were committed. And some of the things that were discussed, allegedly, in these meetings, including his harsh grading of uh, specifically female students and his sexist comments that apparently had been made uh, in class and on campus to females. It's very much par for the course for what we've understood thus far and speculated about Koberger and his anger issues towards women or the idea of him possibly being an incel. I'm curious to get your thoughts. I mean, it's not surprising. You know, it's one of those things where having these beliefs usually will be expressed in some way. Now, generally speaking, whoever has a a delusion about something, right? And I use delusion simply to mean that it is someone with a uh, fixed and false belief system that is clearly incorrect. Mm-hmm. What happens is that uh, for the most part, the person can keep it under wraps, right? Just because someone has a delusion doesn't mean that anybody on the outside is ever going to know it. But there will be times in which those delusional thinking, right, that delusional thinking will be expressed. So I, if he was someone who believed himself to be, you know, of, of a more higher value than women, if he believed himself to be entitled uh, to certain things uh, from women, then he's absolutely going to uh, exhibit behaviors like that towards women, particularly for those that he believes may be challenging to his power and authority, such as women that are getting a college education. Uh, is it that 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 someone like Koberger is uh, upset about? Is it uh, really kind of a, a class thing or is it more so I've been rejected by women my entire life and now I have this beef with attractive young women in general because I, I can't seem to attract them or hold uh, any sort of relationship with them? And and he doesn't seem to be one that realizes it, it's it's not them, it, it's it's him. Well, what I would say to that is there isn't really much of a difference between whether it's uh, a part of the established patriarchal system of oppression that we all live under, mm-hmm. or is it just simply something that's autogenic and innate, something that came from him? What I would what I would say is that the distinction between is it someone who just believes that all of these problems are uh, self inflicted, right? What I mean is that. Uh, what other people are going through really cares about what he's going through or is it something where there's a much bigger issue at a systematic way of oppression that has influenced him and I would say they're both one and the same I mean one comes from the other sure. whether it's uh, the system influencing him or him influencing the system either way this is someone who does not believe that everybody is equal, that that he believes himself to be entitled to other kinds of things. And he's demonstrating this by being harder on a group of individuals. Now, whether they're attractive women or not, I think is kind of inconsequential for him. Mm-hmm. I think uh, the target of you know, uh, the, the, the individuals that he potentially has killed, I think that their attractiveness is, is certainly an aspect. But I wouldn't be surprised if 
some of the some of the women that he is rating harder, you know, harder than he didn't view them as uh, sexually attractive. He just viewed them as women. And because he viewed them as women in his mind, they are simply second class and should be treated stricter than a, a man. How does one develop that way of thinking? Is that something that is is kind of brought on through uh, your upbringing, through parenting, through viewing uh, others' actions, uh, or is this something that, I mean, it almost seems somewhat of a, a character flaw of a personality defect or a personality a disorder of some sort where one has this bizarre view of, of women uh, almost wanting to have the relationships but when he goes to sit down for dinner with one, uh, he's very awkward. He doesn't really know how to conduct himself uh, in a, a, a what one consider appropriate way uh, in common society. Well, I think that I, I think a lot of it comes from uh, the idea of social learning theory, which is this idea that for the most part uh, we're born kind of as. Uh, I don't want to say blank slates because that's not what I mean, but uh, we're very impressionable. And so all of the influences from our parents, from primary caregivers, right, from music, media, right, everything plays a role. And until we're able to actually demonstrate the behaviors associated with the things that we learned growing up, it, we're just taking it in. We're just taking We're just soaking it all up as a sponge that it's certainly possible that he viewed a uh, uh, he viewed a society in which he saw people that were less than and he viewed them and that they had specific characteristics. Those people that are less than him were have similar characteristics. And so if those individuals come into his life that have those characteristics, he's not going to know how to interact with them. He's not going to know what to do. He's not going to know what to say or how to be in an appropriate manner because there's an underlying sense. And I know some people are going to say, well, isn't Dr. Delatory describing narcissism? I'm not describing narcissism. What I'm describing is the way in which individuals perceive the world around them. And because he would view himself of a higher status than other individuals, people with a higher status don't know how to interact with people of a, 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 a disparate status. So, I would not be surprised then that as he attempts to make connections, which everybody wants, everybody wants a connection, but as he attempts to make them and as the individuals he interact with demonstrate qualities that are associated with a lesser than, he's going to really struggle. He's going to really not have an ability to interact appropriately. It, it, yeah, it, it, it's so interesting how that all develops and that how it all plays out. With this going on, how much do you think getting fired uh, or, or being talked to initially, having to sit down and have these performance reviews and such, um, affected or, or triggered him uh, in in the crime itself? Was it a blow to his ego? His ego, not eagle. Maybe he has a pet eagle. That might be something that we, we just learned about. Uh, does he look to commit this crime as, uh, oh, you're going to fire me? I'm not good enough. I'll show you. Or how does that equate? I think that's part of it. I, I, I would be very interested. And I think, I think you hit on something right here, Tony, that it's not necessarily the firing. I'm sure firing was very traumatic and very stressful for him. But it's the initial talking to. It's the initial understanding that someone didn't think that what you were doing was okay. And if if that individual who did speak to him initially, because I, I imagine the process is first you get a warning, then you know, then it accumulates up until a firing. If that professor was a woman, I could see him starting down the path of I'm going now to sort to sort of set right right the women in, in you know that are surrounding me are trying to bring me down. I can absolutely see that being an impetus. Is it the cause? No, it's not the cause. He chose to do this. He's the cause of of why he did what he did. But he has to rationalize. It. He has to justify. It. He has to make an excuse in his mind as to why this is okay. Mm -hmm. and I wouldn't be surprised if that was part of the issue that led to this event current right the 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 four deaths that he's alleged to have committed i wouldn't be surprised if this was the path that, that got him on the way to do it we i think we've all run across people uh in our life that kind of have this sort of 
uh, disposition uh, in their way of living life and how they perceive things and then how they act out, whether it be sexist or whether it be uh, racist or whether it be something that that puts them above others in their their mind. And it, it could be income. It could be uh, education. It could be anything that, that someone puts themselves up onto this pedestal. And then when they get knocked down, uh, it's it's a much harder blow to them than it is to others. Uh, it's the reason why narcissists don't ever want to, re- and it's difficult for them to ever face what they're doing because it totally uh, shatters their view of themselves. Is there a way, is there anything that, that can be done in life to prevent someone from uh, going down this extreme dark path? Obviously, many people that you know, we've probably known don't go that far, but the signs are there that you, if you heard uh, down the road that so-and-so did something like this and you knew kind of how their personality was, I know plenty of people I wouldn't be that surprised with. Well, here's the thing. The person has to want to. Sure. The first thing that it requires, the first thing that re- is going to be required is a self-awareness, right? An insight that there is something going on, a realization that the interactions that we have with individuals are meant to teach us about how we are interacting with those individuals. They're not meant as slights, although some people absolutely can be very mean and be purposeful in trying to hurt your feelings. That certainly can happen, but that's still a lesson, right? Mm-hmm. The individuals who try to hurt us, right, who are mean to us, and they're, they're doing it because they know that they can get away with it. So we have to make the choice to say, those are just words, you're not impacting me. So it requires a level of self-awareness and self-insight that some individuals don't want to have because it is very painful to learn that there are people that just don't like you. And so, you know, on the path of, you know, stopping the, the, the racist and misogynistic to to stop this patriarchal system of oppression that we live under, it's going to require that each individual take us, you know, a a self-appraisal and say, how am I contributing to this level of oppression? What am I doing and how am I going to move forward to break that system? Some people just can't do it. Yeah, uh, that's the question. Uh, it, is it a question of wanting to or literally being incapable of doing? I, I know some of the explanations that I've heard when I've studied uh, borderline personalities and such and why they're so difficult to work with for folks in your profession uh, is because it's almost nearly impossible to ever break through to them uh, to have them make these sort of realizations and such. And it's not so much a I, I don't want to. It's more of an incapable uh, way of an incapable way of thinking that they, they they just can't do it. Is that true? Is that something that exists where some people just will never be able to wrap their mind around some of these things to to correct their lives so they don't go down these extreme roads? I think so. I think there are individuals that they just don't have the skills necessary in order to do in, in order to do that. I, but I think for the most part, it is more about a wanting to, because it requires again the wanting to change requires pain. It requires stress. It requires a very uh, a lot of very negative uh, and, and very difficult emotional states to go through because you have to recognize. That, that what's, that's what makes you a whole human being. Mm-hmm. By simply trying to repress parts of who you are, you only become a portion of who you are supposed to be. And so if you don't want to, and now, yes, again, there are some people that can't, but if you don't want to do it because it's too painful, then you're missing out on a whole experience of life that's there to teach you how to be a better person. I'm curious to get your take on uh, some of the opinions that are, are coming out right now about the knife and the knife sheath. Uh, John Kelly, a psychotherapist with experience in interviewing serial killers, said uh, to Fox News Digital, if you took a pistol out of your holder, wouldn't you put it back in? Also saying, I don't know anybody who wouldn't. And if I went uh, fishing and had to take my knife out, I'd put it back in the sheath. Uh, did Koberger leave evidence on purpose? That's the question with the knife sheath right now, whether uh, either to leave a piece there for whatever bizarre reason he may have or to throw people off, uh, thinking that it may be uh, military or something of that nature, being that there was some military insignia on the knife itself or on the knife sheath itself. I, th- I think, you know, a lot of people are trying to put too much of a planner 
inside, you know, they're, I think they're trying to imprint this, this you know, well-organized individual uh, and, and Brian Koberger. I think that the, they're trying to conflate the two. Here's, here's the reality. It is very strange that a knife sheath, right, if it would have been strapped through his belt, that it fell off, right? It would be very strange. But the truth is, is that, you know, when you're going through whatever it is that you're going through, right, this, this violent act, why would he think about putting the knife away, right? He's thinking about moving from one person to the next to engage in the behaviors that he had been fantasizing about. There is no guarantee that he's actually thinking clearly and logically. He's, he's simply thinking about completing the task at hand, the mission at hand, the thing that he's been thinking about. This idea that, you know, I would put my gun back in my holster. I don't even know what that means. He didn't use a gun. He used a knife. And I understand yeah. that this was sort of, you know, an example of, of why someone would do something like this. But you don't use a gun the same way that you, that you use a knife. And plus, if he's going through all of these stabbing motions, he's probably got a hand cramp. He might not be able to let go of the knife. So I don't think he planted evidence. I think I think people are attributing a lot of things to him that that are just simply are not true. I would have to agree with you. I'm going to continue to roll my eyes at that assumption because I, I keep yeah. seeing it and it feels like, okay, we're really digging here, aren't we? We're trying to, to put yeah. more into this than is actually there. And I think that's an important thing to be aware of as this continues forward. Dr. John Delatore, thank you so much for your insights on the Koberger case. As obviously, it continues to move forward slowly but surely. Always appreciate your insight. Be sure to press subscribe wherever you download podcasts. You don't miss any of our discussions and breaking updates on this and the other cases that we are following for you right here. Get a commercial-free experience through Apple Podcasts right now when you go there and become a premium subscriber. Get access to all of our episodes with no commercials. Until next time, for all of us here, I am Tony Bruschi. Thanks for listening. Thank you.